Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mortgage Coaches Training Thursday. This is Lori Lytle, and I'll be hosting our training today. So with today, what we're going to do, um, for those of you who are new to uh, Training Thursday, what today is is uh, like a Q&A training. So if there's anything that you are wondering how to do or you know need a little more help with, open up the question area in GoToMeeting. Place in there your struggles, or if there's some particular presentation you want to um, me to show. Today is just open um, QA. So what I want to do is focus on what your needs are. This is your training. So go ahead and open up uh, your questions and let me know where you're from. Um, I see Christine. We got a Prime Lending. That's great. If you have any questions, uh, I know you use the Optimal Blue API. Hey Gary, welcome to the call. Hey, Kathy, I know you always listen to these calls. If there's anything specific you want to see, let me know. Uh, Ken, um, I don't believe we're on a site license. Hey, Les, how you doing? Uh, Fairway, that's good. Hey, Michelle. So um, open up your question area. Let me know. Um, hey, Starlet. Uh, Taffy's here, too. Um, let me know an area you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on an open house presentation? Um, can someone let me know also if you can hear me? Make sure uh, that's the issue because I don't have anyone um, commenting in the question area. So if you can, okay. Okay, we've got a few. I'm doing my master TCAs. Okay. Okay, great, Starlet. Thank you. Um, and Les has questions on uh, scripting, and he's doing master templates. So um, with that, uh, please, again, open up your question area. Do you have struggles when you're creating a presentation? You're too slow. Um, are you using product templates and feed templates? Are you using those in conjunction? Because that will really speed you up. Um, you're able to uh, put in fee uh, in your product templates, your fees and your monthly costs. So there's those items as well. So let's go ahead and go into Edge. And um, first thing I want to point out is I'm going to go to the help area because there is a lot of scripting here. I also want to point to some other trainings. And then, um, ah, cost of weight. Thank you, Gary. We've got a topic. <laughs> OK, we'll do a cost of weight um, presentation. What's nice with the cost of weight, so if we're going to go through the cost of weight, and again, if there's anything else, um, you guys want to put it in, put it in the question area. Cost of weight is great because we can show you a cost of weight. We can also work with the reinvestment strategy. So you'll be able to uh, learn that as well. So um, let's go first to the help area. When you click on the help button, you're taken directly to our Mortgage Coach Support Center. So with the support center, you can see quite quickly we have um, different reference links. So at the top area is where you can find information. So if you're new to Mortgage Coach, um, there's a lot of trainings. We have a um, 101 and 102 series. We also have an introductory to EDGE every Monday so at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're new to EDGE, that gives you all the basics, understanding and how to create a presentation, as well as Rate Watch. So we have that there. And then less, there's some scripting here that you'd be able to use. So you could click on any of these to get some scripting. Also, our coaching call archive. I want to point out this uh, call plus our Tuesday coaching calls are all recorded. We have a great call last Tuesday um, that we have posted in here. So with that, um, that was Tim Brahim, Danny Hornell, and Jeremy Forsman. For CA, winning business with Propter scripting. So there you go, Les. If you haven't listened to this one, um, go ahead and click on this uh, Tuesday call, and that will also be able to help you out. One of um, last thing, want to point out our website. You can also get to those coaching calls directly from our website, mortgagecoach.com. We also can get to that support center as well, and your Edge login. Want to point out in the next area and to connect, we have a calendar. And in that calendar is where all our trainings are held. So if you haven't um, attended any, any of these trainings, if you're not familiar with the mobile device, and again, a lot of people, what we find out, it's learning to use the mobile and learning to use how to present your uh, presentation. So every Wednesday, we always have a mobile Wednesday. You can see it right here. Sign up. People sign up more than that. Um, also, um, the Tuesday calls here. Um, let's see, Les. Okay, so um, uh, Les's question was scripting for um, a master uh, file. 
So with that, let's go back to Mortgage Coach. And what, um, before we dive into our master, our, our cost of weight presentation, what Les is talking about master files. So what I'm going to do is you're looking at the home screen here in Mortgage Coach Edge. The upper area is your client facing reports, the total cost analysis, and the rent versus zone. Where below you'll have your open house flyers and seller buy downs, and these are um, co-branded with your realtor partner. But on both of these areas, you see a view all, and when you click on that view all, you could do a search, and I you can narrow down your listing. I'm just going to go ahead and search so you can see all my files, and you can see at the top we have quite a few um, generic files, and these could be your master templates. And with that, I just put double asterisk in front of a file that I want to list at the top of my list because it does go alphabetically. And the asterisk will be able to let me have that easily accessible. You can also um, be able to have a master template of a cost of weight. And you can also copy it, um, that master template and be able to provide it specifically for a borrower if you wanted to do it that way. So with that um, scripting, a lot of times with the video, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But a lot of times when you have a cost, uh, master template, you want a generic video. You want to introduce yourself. You want to keep it short. Try to keep it under a minute and a half because, again, it's attention span. You've got to remember that with people. And then um, just introduce yourself and what you can um, provide your borrower. Um, if you're scripting toward partners, again, how can you help them um, with their business as well as being able to provide the mortgage education. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, I have a couple presentations here. I'm actually going to build my cost of weight from Training Thursday last week. Let's see if I can find Let me narrow it down. Six action nine. There we go, last Thursday. Actually, I'm going to just prepare from scratch, make it easier. Um, so with the cost of weight, there's a couple ways of doing a cost of weight um, comparison. Um, sometimes with the cost of weight, you just compare two products, an FHA and a conventional. Um, also, what you could do with the cost of weight um, is show four options in the aspect of you could show them what you can provide today. Sometimes a borrower um, wants to wait and be able to, oh, let's see if I could have them. Cost of weight is probably this one. Let's just bring it up so it'll be easier to explain, and then we'll show you how you could build this. Okay, so with this, we have four products for a cost of weight. A lot of times, a cost of weight, you can have two, and you just show the difference in interest rate, um, potentially, if that will rise. But in this particular case, what we are going to do is we're going to create a presentation if they bought now. So when they buy now, you can see how they have a purchase price of 250000 a loan amount of 200000 interest rate of 4, and a term of 360. So this is what you could get for them today. So now if you're working with a borrower and you, um, they're saying, ah, I get it, but you know, I really want to wait for that purchase price to drop. So again, um, okay, Gary. Um, and again, uh, you could go ahead and show that, but you can also point out, yes, it could drop in purchase price, but you could have an increase in interest rate. So we'll show you how you could develop that. The third one is showing them, okay, that's great. You were waiting. The price didn't drop on that home, but the interest rate increased from um, when you had it. So you could show them the purchase price, the loan amount, but with a higher interest rate. So there was no drop in purchase price, but increase in rate. And then lastly, you could show them instead, what if the purchase price increase and your interest rate increases? So this is the type of a cost of weight that we're going to show, and it's a great way of um, providing that education. You'll notice that I'm highlighting all my fields, and what I do is just highlight a uh, cell and left click. You left click again, it removes that highlight, and if you clear all, you see the button at the very base, it clears out all the highlights at once for you. Another question Gary had was how to upload uh, to social media. So a couple questions depending, let's see, uh, Gary, uh, 
I don't believe you're on a site license, so an enterprise account. Um, possibly you are. Um, with that, what you could do is in the lower uh, right hand corner of your uh, presentation, you have a share button. That share button, depending on your site license, could have a Facebook and Twitter page. And it could go ahead and help you walk through that link. But what you could do is highlight this link, and then you could post that on your social media. This is the link that you would end up emailing. You can email it directly from your presentation, or you could post. And what you need to really remember is check your guidelines for your company on how they want you to post social media. Always remember when you're um, creating something that you're posting, you do not want to use anyone's personal information. You just want to make it generic. And you can see I just put a cost of weight title here. Also in the property area would display below here. So if you want additional taglines, you could use the property address and it will allow you to put a little bit more information in this area. So always remember when you do that social media, check with your marketing department, make sure um, what you can post, and then always make sure it is generic and you're not posting anyone. Okay, so the cost of weight we're going to develop, let me go ahead and bring this to a different screen. And let's go ahead and actually we'll walk through it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our client uh, screen. So if you're following along and want to create this presentation, click on our new client and that starts the new presentation. And what I have done is I marked it as a marketing presentation. You can also do it as an individual, and then you can uh, fill out the information of borrow one and borrow two. When you have a cost of weight, and you have it as a marketing piece or as a master template, if you use that copy feature um, and you copied it into a new client, it would just have all this information and then you could fill out the information for your borrower, but yet it would have all those products. So if you need to uh, show you I'm copying, I'll go ahead and show you how you copy this um, after we're done. So I want to go ahead and update this to Thursday's training and let's put today's date. That's how I keep track of my um, samples. And with this, always use your friendly name field great when copying because it tells you exactly what that presentation is for, especially if you're using a marketing one that you want to specifically send to a person, go ahead and mark it um, in the friendly name what that person is. So we're going to do a TCA. If you were doing a rent versus zone presentation, you would mark it rent. Moving on. Okay, so you're doing a rent versus now. Um, what we'll do is we'll build the TCA and then I can show you um, how we'll uh, look at it as a uh, rent versus zone. So with that, I'm marking it as a purchase a new home that eliminates all my current mortgage information for that refinance, those screens. Then when you come to the assumptions, I'm just putting an appraisal amount, purchase price of 250000 Want to point out, if you have a field that is in red, if you leave that field empty, you're going to get an exclamation mark down at the ribbon. That's just letting you know, go back, there's a field in red that's left empty, make sure you fill that out. Moving on, the next two screens, I'm just bypassing the affordability screens and going to product. So with that, you can see how with that, I do have some fields here, but it's not necessary to fill out a presentation. This will provide my debt to income ratio on our product screen only. And then when we get to our investment, I'll show you where the savings balance, if you place something in here, where that will go. And if you're doing a rent versus own, Gary, um, you do need to use a tax bracket. There's another field you'll have to um, place in there as well. But you would put a tax bracket in here. And if you're not sure of your tax bracket, you would just click on this button. It opens into a new web page, and you could get an estimate. And this is an estimate of just their base taxes. There are a lot of different questions that um, can be answered to have a more reduction in their taxes. This is just basic um, covering the home interest. I want to put my head out. And those of you doing the MCC uh, tax credits, we do have the option of showing one product with and one product without. So if that's part of your uh, presentation, go ahead and make sure you fill in those MCC credits if you do those products. Moving to the next screen, it's just data collection. Again, bypassing that screen and we're going to product. So now with product, you can see on the very right hand side, um, you have the loan to value ratio. I did put 20% down. 
so we don't have to mess with MI today. And then you'll see that debt to income ratio right above. Those figures came from the affordability screen when we put in that um, gross income as well as um, their monthly costs. And MCC um, credit, it is a credit, um, you have to be in that specific area and specific lenders. You, it's like a um, down payment assistant type of a thing. So um, if you find any more, your company has to be part of that program. And then if you do a Google search in your area um, on MCC credits, uh, it would be able to provide you more information because it is different, but it does allow a credit um, for the borrower um, for their mortgage. So now we're going to create the buy now, the very first of these products. What I have done is I put a, a title, just buy now, and anytime you do a, a title, always keep it less than 12. So if you're doing a, using an API like um, Optimal Blue if, uh, with Prime and Fairway, you just always want to come in here. Make sure you correct that title because the title would be quite long because it is your secondary titles. So just come in here, make sure you have it 12 characters. So what I've done, the purchase price would have carried over from my assumption screen. Otherwise, just go ahead and put in a purchase price. I'm using 250 for now and 20% down. It is a marketing piece, so it's a good way of just um, keeping at 20%. Again, you could copy it, make it um, um, customized for a particular person if they want less than 20% down. Interest rate, I'm just using 4% and a term of 360. So I place all this information, it's just a fixed rate loan, and then when I advance my screens, we come to our fee area. So with our fees, I went ahead and have 15 days of prepaid interest, and you can see how you can hover your mouse over that and it shows the cost. And I also want to point out, even though we're keying this information in the first time, you could see, um, save product templates and fee templates and make it a one-two shot when you do uh, your uh, place in a product template and keystroke. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So I put 15 um, days here. Points, want to point, <laughs> point out that you can put in just positive points, hover your mouse, you get the dollar amount. Also, you could put in if you have a rebate. So say I have a quarter percent rebate, I put it in as a negative, it shows that dollar amount, it will credit against those fees. Now let's go ahead and talk about our fees. So what you can do if these areas are open for you, mine are grayed out right now, you can place in a dollar amount as a lump sum. It won't show as itemized fees, but it will just give a rough ballpark figure. It's a good quick way of getting through just to make it quick and simple. But to be um, itemizing um, the fees more, you can become more transparent. Um, just one moment, let me have a question for a moment. Uh, good question, Kathy, you can't. Um, Kathy is asking a great question from Optimal Blue. She does have the interface. Um, and taking a file from Optimal Blue, she was curious how you can um, compare different down payments. And unfortunately with Optimal Blue, the way it currently works is you can only um, bring over one type of down payment. But by using the copy feature, Kathy, even though you have one product, once you um, create those fees and monthly costs in there, you then can copy it really quickly to the second product and then make your adjustments. And at the end, if you want, I can show you how you can do that. So now going back to our fee templates, if you're on an enterprise account, you do have your fee drop down. And with your fee drop down, you could pick any kind of uh, fee template that you have in here. So say I'm going to go ahead and just bring over my conventional fees. You can see how that it automatically overwrites here. Um, and I'll show you the copy function in just a moment, Kathy. So you can see how you could bring down fees. So this was um, an example that I had used. You could see sometimes if you have a fee template, if it's left open, it's because that fee is variable. And you just need to come in here and place in the amount of that fee. If these are consistent, you can also use a percentage in those areas. If it's consistent, you can always then create your own fee template from what the corporate has provided you by just coming in here, make any kind of modifications that if your fees are different for your branch, if you know that your lender's entitles fee, if it's a set number or if it's a percentage, 
you can add that. And then you'll notice at the lower right hand corner there's a save as template button. So this way you're going to start customizing the fees for you, your loans and your branch. And with that you then can do a save template. You can put in a new name. If you want it at the top of your list, remember just use an asterisk and it would put it at the top of the list. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in today's date so you can see how that will look. Put two asterisks. Whoops. There we go. If you originate multiple states, you can also indicate what state that template's for and can save it that way. And remember, you can always do copies, either create it as you're going, as we're doing here, or you can always go into your settings and copy one fee template to another and make your updates there. So you now see that I have a new template and when I go out and back in, this will be um, rested at the top of my list. So with that, um, I have all my fees in here. You'll notice that I have my hazard insurance premium and it's all grayed out. When we go into our monthly costs, I'll show you how this carried through. You don't need to put any of these reserves in or your premium. It could all be done in your monthly cost screen. So once I'm done with the fees, you always want to apply to the loan. And then once we're done, we can advance the screen to our monthly cost. And this is our last screen for our products. So I opened up my percentage fields, placed in my estimate for my hazard and my property tax. I don't have MI because I'm 20%. And then if you look down below, we have our hazard insurance reserves I placed in two months for reserves, four months for taxes, and then this is my 12-month premium. By doing this, this allowed for the um, dollar amounts to be placed in the fee screen. So this is how you can control your reserves with um, your fee costs. So now once you're done, just before we move on and create our second product, for those of you, um, you could create a template at this point. You see how you have save as template. And when you save this, what's great, it's going to have your monthly costs in there as well as your fees. So let's go ahead and put in today's date. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look at our settings, how you can modify this afterwards. So I'm going to press OK. And so now we're going to go ahead and create our second product. So let's advance our screen. And remember, this is wait for drop. So with that, what we we're going to do is increase that interest rate and decrease that purchase price. So if you're starting from scratch, Gary, this would be the quickest way of doing it. So if I go to my Copy From button, we already created our product initially. We have our fees in there. We have our monthly costs. So the only thing we'll have to do is just modify that purchase price and the interest rate. So the quick way to do it is press Copy From. We've developed already that Buy Now, but just to show you, it shows all your products. So I'm going to take that Buy Now, my first product I created, and press OK. And you'll see how it carried over the purchase price and the interest rate from that Buy Now. So all I'm going to have to do is place, place in 240000 and increase my interest rate. And Kathy, that was the very similar thing you would do with Optimal Blue. So if you had carried one product from Optimal Blue over and you wanted to change that down payment, you would come from Copy From, copy that product that you carried over, which would be in first position, and then it would carry over to the second product. At that point, you then can update your down payment, your rate, and any other modifications you could do. But that copy from will make it a lot quicker for you. So we went ahead and decreased that purchase price and increased that interest rate. Now when we advance the screen, you'll see our fees carried over from that first product, so I don't have to carry, uh, make any modifications. And same with my monthly costs. So that's where that copy from will help you. The product template fee template, templates help you initially and then use that copy from button. So again, you can save it as a template and to start your next product, you'll have a green button that says new product. Okay, good, Kathy. And if so, um, 
hopefully you have your uh, fees and your monthly costs included, but if you use that copy from, everything does copy over and it should be the least amount of keystrokes for you. So now we're going to create a no drop, which means we're keeping the same purchase price as the buy now, but the interest rate increase. So again, just go to your copy from, copy from the buy now, because that was the one, or you can always copy from wait to drop. So let's just copy from wait to drop to show you how that works. So you can see we have that high interest rate, but now we just need to go and put in that 250000 So now we have a no drop created rather quickly. And now let's create our fourth product by going to new product, putting your title price and rate increase and do a copy from again. So what I'm going to copy from is the no drop because that has my increased interest rate and then I could just increase my loan amount. So we're going to increase the loan amount here, 10,000. We went 10,000 either way, going for a decrease as well as an increase. The interest rate is already increased, so I have it at four and a half. So when I advance my screens, the monthly uh, fees, and the monthly cost carryover. So that's how you could get quickly through the screens and be able to create one product after another. Again, if you're using an API um, with different down payments, carry one over and then do the copy. So now let's go ahead and um, take a look at our presentation. So what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over presentation, go directly up to the jump out preview, And let's go ahead and update our quote date. Let's put in a new date of today. Always remember to put a current date in there so it shows when those rates were good. Also want to point out, and sometimes with the um, OB APIs or um, in general, this box might not be marked. Mark this box. This is going to provide you your email alerts. So this will let you know if the presentation was closed. You're going to get an email alert as well as an alert within your mobile device and your home screen of um, Mortgage Coach. So always make sure this box is marked. If you're doing any kind of printing, do print from the email link. You'll get a better quality than from the print or PDF. So with that, let's take a look at our preview. So we can see the decrease in the savings, but if they bought now, they would have the most. And then with the increased loan amount or purchase price as well as interest rate, you can see there's no graph on that product, meaning this is the highest cost loan. So now let's dive into a little bit more, showing you a couple different areas, explaining more of the TCA. We'll also then um, show you Edge Live and go into the reinvestment strategy. So let's go into the More Info button here. Want to point out where you can find some data. You've got your current um, payment breakdown here, so you can always show your monthly costs associated with each product. Closing cost details, want to point out there's their down payment, the LTV percentage. And then you have the lump sum of your costs right here. You also, if you see, fee details. And with those fee details, you can um, see all the fees that you have in there plus your monthly costs. It is in alphabetical order per the uh, regulations. And you also be able to just highlight those different areas to be able to move around in those screens. It also points out if it's APR, prepaid escrow, or if you're doing a refinance and that fee is added to the loan amount. What we're going to do next um, in a bit is go into the reinvestment strategy and just to be able to show you how you can use these um, reinvestment strategies, lump sum payments and review that period um, field as well. So we'll come in here, talk about reinvestment strategy. So now what I want to point out, let's go ahead and clear out all the highlights. You can see how you have your payment displaying here in the numeric. And this is quite easy, but now you have the graphs that shows exactly the difference between the highest payment and your lowest payment. And that's what this graph is doing so they don't have to sit there and do the math themselves. So you have each of those graphs. Also, if you click on the more info, it provides that breakdown. 
you have your interest rate, your APR, and your payment. Also, if you had a second lien, that second lien data would appear at the base here. And now let's go into the short-term area. Short-term area is a little confusing. It's really simple, actually. What this is, why do we have a savings over 36 months? This 36 months is a number that can be is a variable and can be changed based on your borrower's goals. So with that, first let's go ahead and check and see what this is. So if you click on the More Info button, what we do is we take the interest in MI that's accrued during that 36-month period. That's money that the borrower is not getting back. It's cost to the loan. That and their fees. We take these two figures and add them together to get the total cost of the loan. So which is the highest and which is the lowest cost? So right there, the buy now is showing that it's around almost 27000 where if they waited in those three years, it would then the cost be around 3100 So it's about $6,000 savings there, roughly. So with that, we could close it out. If you also showed tax benefit, which we'll show in a moment, this area changes slightly. So now with that, what I'm going to do is show you how um, you can use Edge Live, and then with that we're going to talk about the borrower's goals, change some figures so you can see how you can make these changes and work with your borrower as well with Edge Live. So if I go to the lower right hand corner and click on Share, I copy the link to the presentation. And I'm going to open up a new tab and paste that link in here. So this would be just as if a borrower would go ahead and click on the link and they would view the presentation. So first off, they would have to um, read the disclosure language, then click I understand, and they access the presentation. So now what's the difference between your presentation and the borrower's presentation? So let's take a look at that by, let me go ahead and split my screen here so you can see a side-by-side -side look and let's see what those differences are. Let's go ahead and bring up my presentation here. So on the right, left-hand side is the loan officer's copy and on the right-hand side is the borrower's copy. And the one thing that um, you have, let's go ahead and update this again so it just formats to the screen. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the buttons at the base um, on both presentations. You'll notice the one difference is in the center and it's that clear all button. The loan officer's copy has that clear all button. I also want to take this link. If you want, if you would like, go ahead um, and put it in the chat area. If you want to experience how the borrower um, experiences, which would be the right-hand side of the screen, click on that link, open it up, and I will be driving the presentation so you would see how the borrower um, receive it. You'll also notice, besides the clear all button, to the very left of it, you have the number of views. This tells you how many um, presentations are open. So you'll see, because I have it on the left or right-hand side, this counts as one view. Now, someone else has clicked on the link, I have two views. So this will also help you um, see if the borrower is following along with you. So when I click on a uh, column, I'm clicking on the title, you'll notice that my whole column lights up, or highlights. The right-hand side, I just highlighted the column for the borrower. We can now discuss the weight to drop, I highlight that, I drive the presentation for the borrower. And you can keep moving and show each, uh, each product type. If I press clear all, it clears out all my highlights at once and you see how it cleared it off the borrower's presentation as well. When you're working with the mobile device, you're driving the mobile device as well. Clicking on the more info button, you'll see how I drive the presentation as well for the borrower. I could discuss the monthly cost with them. You can see how I highlight and it carries with me and drives it for the presentation as well as the fee details. So if you're doing single premiums or different type of loan that you want to point out um, a specific fee, you'd be able to do that. And you can see how just by highlighting, 
you're driving that presentation, you're really providing that clarity for the borrower and gui um, guiding them through each step. So now uh, we talked about reinvestment strategy. So how can we go ahead and modify these areas? And then also, let's go ahead and close out this screen. I want to work on the monthly costs. I want to talk about the borrower's goals and change these figures. So this is how you can now, you've built your presentation, your borrower, you've reached out to them, and this is how you're going to work with your borrower um, with the presentation. So now let's go back to Mortgage Coacha Edge. With the presentation, let's go ahead and put it at 60 months, a five-year span. So to do that, I go to Edge, I click on the Analysis screen, and in this screen, you'll have your goal area. So you have your short-term goal as well as your long-term. So I'm going to go ahead and make the change to 60 months, and let's just show a term of 15 years. I've made my updates here, and to have it affect the report, you want to uh, move left or right, and that initiates the save of data. So now if you look at the presentation, it just changed to 60 months, and it has also changed to 60 months on the bar's presentation as well. So with that, so you can see how you could talk about the goals of the borrowers. It is standard to start with 60 and 15, but if you know that they're going to be moving in a three-year period, definitely by 10, you could change this from 36 and 10 years. So you capture your goals and you can change the short term as well as the long term to um, show them those costs. Now let's work into the reinvestment strategy. So with that, what you can do is do apples and apples payments. A lot of times you probably won't want to do it on the cost of weight, but this is a great way of showing um, by using that same payment for that highest cost, we're going to make it equal with all the other products. So apples to apples and payments. This will also show a freedom point reduction because you're applying money toward principal, and then it'll also increase your savings. So let's go into Edge. And to do um, a change in reinvestment, you want to click um, in the analysis screen, click on adjust reinvestment strategy, and this is where you can make those changes. So you can see in the screen I have a line here for reduction payment. Also at the very top, you can see my monthly savings. So you can see in red, it's zero, it's my highest cost loan, and then we show the monthly savings compared to that highest cost. So just to do apples to apples, I'm going to go ahead and put my $112.40 toward principal. So now my pity payment, reduction payment matches my highest cost. So let's go ahead and put in that 107 and then 53.86. So with that highest monthly cost, it's 30 years. By having that same payment, applying a little bit amount toward principal, they now will have shaved almost three years off that uh, loan. And then you can see adding that additional 100, it will be 24.5 years and then 20 24.58 years. So this is showing the same monthly payment for each product. So let's go ahead and press OK. And let's advance the screen and take a look at our presentation and how it affects the presentation. So you'll notice it just updated. We have our new freedom points displaying, showing that reduction payment, how much that money going to our principal, how they could pay it off sooner. You also have a line here for the reduction payment. And then in the More Info button, we have it showing not only in that reinvestment strategy screen, we have it looks just like your screen that you see and you update. But we also in the payment breakdown, we have an additional line showing that reduction payment. So you'll notice too, there's a little bit more savings in the monthly cost area. And the reason for that is because you're applying money toward principal, and when you apply more money toward principal, you owe less interest. 
So your interest is decreasing slightly. So these numbers have changed a little bit and you have a little bit more savings. So now how is this going to change if I added a tax benefit? So let's go ahead and add a tax benefit so you can see how this will change in this area. And let me know if you have any questions on that reduction payment. I also want to point out if you, you can do one lump sum payments for a reduction payment um, as well as reinvesting MI. So if you want to know more about that, put it in the question area and I'll go ahead and do that. Um, uh, Starla has a great question. Um, she wants to know if you have an ability to delete a presentation. Um, if you need it or some reason. It really depends on um, your site license. If you're an individual account, let's just uh, go back real quick and then we're going to jump into adding a tax benefit. So let's go to home real quick. So if you wanted to delete a report, depending if you have that capability, you would click on view all, press search, and then when you open up your file, say I wanted to delete this template. You'll see once I highlighted the file, over to the right hand side, I have a delete button. Once you delete it, it will be removed from your database and it's deleted off our system altogether. You might not have this delete button if, you're, if you belong to an enterprise account and they have removed that delete button to um, keep the history of your presentation. So this is where you would find that. Great question, Charlotte. Um, now let's go back to our cost of weight. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into our cost of weight. And what we had done is just work on our analysis screen with the reinvestment strategy. And let's add in the tax benefit. So I'm going to my affordability, can afford, and let's just place in 28% as our tax bracket. Advance the screen because you always want to save that data and let's bring up the presentation and we'll watch. There's going to be a change shortly and it's going to add the tax benefit just as an estimate, remember. So it just made its change and you'll see a line containing the tax benefit. That's roughly about how much a month um, that they would receive as a benefit with the interest. And if you want to understand that calculation more, if you email us at support at Mortgage Coach, we'd be able to provide you that breakdown on how we calculate that amount. Um, Megan, not quite sure on your question, where do you put the cost of weight? Uh, oh, the title here is what I'm thinking. Where I place that, okay, perfect, thanks. Where I place this here is in the very first screen, clients. When you start a client, this is either the display name, your report headline, or if you're doing it for an individual person, you just open it up, place their name in here. So also what you can do, Megan, if I keep it as a marketing presentation, here's my title. If I go to my contact information, you can add a little additional information if you want. Let's just not make it full caps, it gets a little big. So if you place information here, and you could tell I can't type today, so I advance my screen. Let's go back up to our Mortgage Coach presentation and watch how that title will change. So we have the title of cost of weight and then the property information will go ahead and display b below that. And so that's where you can also use it where you can have different um, contact information, a little bit more information about um, you. And why is it hasn't changed yet? Yeah, it did change. Let's just update my presentation, quick way of doing it, and it didn't update, let's see. I'll have to take a look at that because the property address, oh, you, you know what, that's probably what it is, sorry. Um, property address will be used when you use it as an individual. Yes, Les, I'll show you how that copy now button works. 
So I put it back as an individual, and let's see this updates. One more time. Um, yes, what um, Les wants to know is about this. Um, there we go. And you can see how the additional information for the property address printed there. Okay, so um, Les, the Call Me Now button. This was initially um, provided um, when we our presentations were not on the mobile device. And with that, if you have this, it's a settings you put in your account. Um, to display it. And that Call Me Now is just to be able to, it sort of works like Skype. So if a bar wanted to call you from their desktop versus a mobile device, they'd be able to click that button, put in their name, put in a phone number, they can call you, and basically what this is used is to call you, you can answer it, you have about five minutes to talk roughly, but it's more or less to be able to get this call later button because if they get the um, information, it comes back to you. You don't, um, I'm sorry, if you do not answer the call, a scheduler will come back to the borrower and then give them a time and provide you that information when to best reach them. So with that, um, on the Call Me Now, because um, of the mobile device, it's much easier now to use it um, directly from there. But if you go into Edge, into Settings, if you go to the very last tab, it's called Click to Call. We provide three credits to be able to try that feature. So you could go ahead and um, try it. And then you purchase more credits. And again, Les, you um, just email us at support with more information on the credits. But really, you could go ahead and dial it, just see what, how the borrower will um, experience it. Um, just don't answer it when it goes to your voicemail. Just let it come back, and you can see how that scheduler works. So, And then to put that on your presentation, if you go to the very last screen, hover your mouse over presentation to preview, this is the enable call button. So if you have it unmarked, when you look at that preview, that Call Me Now button is no longer there. It's been removed. So that um, triggers that Call Me Now button. It's just right there. Good question. Um, any other questions that anyone might have before we wrap up uh, today's QA? Let's just go back in to see how this looks as the rent versus own. You can always provide a rent versus own with a um, TCA, and all you have to do is toggle between. Remember, there's two links. The presentation are two separate presentations, and you have two links for them. I don't think so, Les. He wants to know if he can integrate the scheduler with his own um, Call Now button. Um, I'm not sure on that one. Um, you could try it. You can also email us at support and we'll be able to um, help you a little bit further there. So by marking it rent, I'm moving through. There's one additional screen for rent. So with it, you could put in their current uh, more uh, rent, so let's say 1400 and say they have an annual rent increase of 3%. Do they have rental insurance? That's just like their monthly cost, so if they do, place that in there. Any other monthly expenses for the rent? Standard deduction. If you don't know what the standard deduction, we have that button that you will take you through and work out that standard deduction for them. So it's just this uh, process. You just ask quite a few questions, and then it will um, you'll be able to determine what number to put in there. And again, it's an estimate that you're providing them. You, they should always go to their tax advisor, get the proper um, advice. So let's just do a single person. Let's just keep going through. I'm single. So you have quite a few uh, little questions that they have covering it. So if uh, um, I can always play with that age, huh? Okay, yes, I provide. See, quite a few. Once you do it a few times, you can see, you'll know what that standard um, deduction will be to be able to provide it. And I forgot, 6,300. I was going to put 69. So when you place that in there, whoops, 
this will help with the adjustment. So now let's go ahead and advance the screen. I have my tax bracket, which is the other item for a rent versus own presentation. And now let's go to our presentation and take a look at the rent versus own report. You'll see that there is no quote date because, again, it's a brand new presentation and you just want to put in the quote date. With that, if you click on preview, now you'll be able to see the rent versus own presentation and showing the advantages of owning a home versus renting. So with that, you could see how my total payment for my rent is $14.50. Maybe I should have probably had a less amount, but it gives you an idea of all the different other products. So that's what we're comparing. Even with the higher loan amount, higher interest rate, it's still less than that rent payment. So you can see the differences over to the side, what that net monthly payment savings are. And these graphs are slightly different. So with that, you can see how we have our total um, payment that includes taxes and insurance. We have our tax benefit that we're subtracting out as well as the principal paid if we change over to a loan. And at that, it will provide the net monthly payment. So it's their mortgage payment, subtract out that benefit, subtract out the other benefit of principal, and that's what their net monthly payment is. That's what the graphs compare against. That's what these savings are, these numbers. It's the net monthly payment, and again, it's the total payment, minus the tax benefit, minus the principal paid. So this is the true cost of their loan. So with that, again, you can go ahead. Uh, there you go, Gary. Um, again, you can always share not only a rent versus own, but with the same time you have that um, TCA as well with those same figures. So you could dive deeper into the TCA with the monthly savings, but for those new time home buyers, this is a great way of showing them because they don't understand that tax benefit in principle. So, any other questions um, that I can answer before we wrap up our call today? Um, Want to point out while we're waiting um, if there's any other questions. Um, Copy all, just want to point out again. So, if I went ahead and copied today's presentation, Is that the one I have? Here it is. So I have this file here. I created my master presentation, but now you want to be able to take that. Someone really wants to have something personalized, or maybe you want to have a customized message for that particular one. It's really quick. You could just copy. If you want to keep the same client inf information, make it generic. You could go ahead and keep it in current client. Then it gives you a new link. You could record your new message and send it off. If you want to change the name, use that same database, but change it and customize that marketing piece. If you click on New Client and press OK, it will take all that data that you just created, copy it over, but it removes the borrower's information. So this way, we have all our products. You can see it's already created. If we went into our assumptions it would, and affordability, it would have all our information. We just then make it customized and then put on a new video. A lot of times if you don't create a new client but keep it in the marketing, always identify um, with that friendly name so it gives you a um, difference when you go and copy future one. And then I went ahead and bounced on my screen. And now that it will be in my list. Okay, I don't see any questions coming in. So lastly, want to point out our settings. Make sure that your information is updated, including a license identifier in front of that number. Business address, make sure you have your branch here. Images. Upload your headshot here. You, um, if you haven't done so, your logo as well. You have your product templates and your fee templates. Want to point out here's the product template I built today. I'm going to remove my interest rate because that's a variable. I don't like quoting an interest rate in a template. 
But now when you apply this template, it has my 20% down, 15 days, my term. You'll notice at the base I have my reserves, my 12-month premium, go into my monthly costs. I have my monthly costs already in my percentage. These dollar amounts will go away, but if you want to go ahead and place it in here, not a problem. If you like just something clean, press OK, and I have my fees in there. So when I apply now this product template, you know, I'll go fast because unless I have to make some updates on fees, my fees are applied, my prepaid interest is applied, as well as my hazard reserves. Okay, let me show you. So um, we're going to go ahead and use that Buy Now 616 template. And this is a lot with OB or any API. So say if I went to a product and I'm starting off with my template, first off, I want to put in 250. So I have my loan amount. Let's use that product template I just developed. So I'm going to go to, there it is, buy now 616. And when I apply it, you'll see there's no interest rate. And if you're using an API, we don't want to override the interest rate that came from OB. And my fear is if I had a interest rate in there when I created my templates two months ago, my rates have changed. I don't want to accidentally forget to change it. That's why I leave it as zero. This way when I come in, this is the only field I have to input is my interest rate. And again, if you want to default an interest rate, you can. Just remember to go back and modify it. You see how our fees are in there? As well as our monthly costs. So I'm done. So that's how quick it is to be able to copy it. So if you have a marketing piece and you want to specifically send a specific uh, recording and email, if you want it separate less, I would just use that copy in that view all. If not, just once you're done, go on to that presentation, put on that video. And again, introduce yourself, keep it uh, brief, and then um, you know, talk uh, how you can work with them um, with realtors. And if you want, you can always send that presentation link to support. We can always review it and make any suggestions and also review the data on um, the report. So any of you, if you want us to review the presentation, just email us at support at mortgagecoach.com. And with that, unless there's any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. Uh, thank you for our training Thursday, um, attending. It took time out of your day. I hope you uh, learned a little bit more and be able to get through the presentations a lot quicker. Remember, um, go to Mortgage Coach, the calendar. We have the Intro to Mortgage Coach on Mondays you can sign up for, as well as Mobile Wednesday. So with that, everyone, I will be on if you have any other questions. Otherwise, thank you so much and have a wonderful day.